Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. And another heavyweight news mashup video today, starting with Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder, who have passed VADA testing. And that's reported by Mauricio Suleiman, WBC president, um, on his social media. So he says, see here on screen, making my monthly report to the board and happy to see all these negative results reported by VADA testing from the clean boxing program. Some of them are Bronze Bomber, Tyson Fury, and then it goes on to list some other fighters. So unclear if this is testing in the build-up to the fight during training camp, for example, or if this is uh, testing from immediately after the fight. Bob Aram is talking up his fighter, Kubrat Pulev, to beat Anthony Joshua on June 20th in the UK. So Aram, who was appearing on the Ariel Hawani show, interrupted the host when uh, the Ariel Hawani was suggesting the fight everyone wanted to see was a showdown, undisputed Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury, interrupting, saying, whoa, 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 Anthony Joshua is getting knocked out. Listen, Anthony Joshua is getting knocked out June 20 at Tottenham Stadium in London by my guy, Kubrat Pulev. Take it to the bank. There won't be an Anthony Joshua after June 20. Meanwhile, Bob Arum has also stated that they won't be entertaining offers for Undisputed until Tyson Fury is through his next fight, which is, of course, the trilogy fight with Deontay Wilder. So Arum says, of course, we are interested in making that fight, which is the Undisputed fight. Of course, Tyson would want to do that for the money, for the prestige and for the good of the sport. But the time is not now to work out the details. Don't just assume that Joshua will still be around at the end of this year, because I don't think he will be. I think Pulev will beat him. Pulev is yards and yards better than Andy Ruiz Jr., who, if I remember correctly, knocked Joshua out. The idea of talks now is ludicrous. If Joshua comes through and Tyson comes through, of course we will have talks. Why waste time talking about something that might never come to fruition? If my guy Pulev hits Anthony Joshua on the chin, there ain't no Fury Joshua fight. American heavyweight Dominic Brazil says he wants to face Andy Ruiz Jr. next. Brazil is coming off a loss to Deontay Wilder in May 2019, brutally knocked out in one round, while Andy Ruiz Jr. is coming off a loss to Anthony Joshua in December 2019. So Brazil says Andy Ruiz for sure. Andy Ruiz has made a big splash in the heavyweight game. We've exchanged in the ring a couple of times as far as sparring. He knows what I've got and I know what he has. So it would be an exciting fight and I think it's a fan favorite fight. He's a big brawler. I like to step into the ring and throw some leather to his face. So it would be a good one. And he goes on to say, I'm looking to be back in the ring late this May, early June. I'm excited to be back. I'm also excited to be back in the gym, working hard, moving to a future date. will be interesting to see who fights Dominic Brazil next, because his name has been linked with a number of heavyweights within the PBC stable. But I would note he said he wants to return to the ring in May or June, whereas Andy Ruiz Jr. is talking about August. So we'll see where things go from here. The Australian heavyweight Dempsey McKean, who knocked out Jonathan Jonathan Rice to pick up the IBF Intercontinental title as well as the WBO Asia Pacific title over this past weekend has reflected on his performance on Fight Night and this is a clip exclusively provided to this channel. Yeah hey guys just uh, reflecting the fight on the weekend uh, good hard battle with Jonathan Rice pushing me in the 10 rounds uh, managed to get the the stoppage in the last two seconds of the 10th round as well I feel like I was ahead of the scorecards I definitely won the first five rounds uh, he, he come out with a good six round land some good shots got a bit of momentum in that round I come out in the seventh I stole that round I think he he took a round off uh, and then I think he definitely probably won the rounds eight and nine as well he, he, he gained a bit more momentum there as well he pushed hard, you know, in the tenth round, uh, coming out, and I knew um, I didn't want to go to the judges' scorecard, so really wanted to push for that finish as uh, tight as it was, and as tight as he was as well. So, uh, yeah, so no better feeling than, than get that TKO victory and uh, become the new IBF Intercontinental Champ and WBO Asia Pacific. But uh, definitely hardest fight uh, to date. 
130 kilo man. Uh, so yeah, he was big and he's strong. He uh, tied me up in the clinches as well. It started to gas my shoulders out, which started to show in the later rounds. Uh, fatiguing, fatiguing my punches, slowing me down a bit as well. So I had to had to work a bit of an inside game. But uh, overall, I'm, I'm very happy with the, the first half of the fight. Second half uh, needs a bit of work as well, but um, it's all learning curve as well, you know. So I can I can definitely come back from this fight. Uh, a lot of things to work on, um, and yeah, but overall got the got the knockout finish and a couple of new belts, so could be happier. Cheers. It appears an injury that Otto Varlin has may in fact be more serious than the public has been led to believe. So Varlin pulled out of a March 28th fight with Lucas Brown due to a foot injury. And you can see here on screen a clip that was posted to Salita Promotions because Varlin is promoted by Dimitri Salita. And it talks about Monday motivation, heavyweight contender Otto Varlin in the gym despite his injury. And initially when he pulled out, it was described as a minor injury. But the fact he's wearing a moon boot in this clip would suggest it's a bit more serious than we have been led to believe. Resurgent heavyweight Robert Hellenius believes that the referee's mistake in his fight with Adam Kovnatsky over this past weekend was his benefit because the first knockdown was ruled a slip that was in the fourth round and Hellenius says it was a good benefit for me because he didn't get the count and I knew he was wobbly because I was there you know I was there I saw him hurt I felt him hurt so of course if he would have got a 10 count then maybe he would have recovered better. And rounding out this heavyweight news mashup video, a little piece on Tyrone Spong. So an interesting post from Mundo Boxing, remembering Spong as well as Philip Hergovich trained down in Miami with Pedro Diaz. So the post here says that Tyrone Spong, the king, training hard for his next fight in Paris. So then it um, adds a whole bunch of people, but it's unclear who he's going to be fighting and when, but uh, are they saying Paris as in France or Paris as in Texas or Paris as in somewhere else? As yet, there is no date listed for him to be fighting and returning on BoxRec, but apparently he is training for an upcoming fight. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often, hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.